take a look at the kick drum here. Right now we just have this very lonely single sample sitting there. I'm gonna use the zoom slider to just zoom in a little bit. And uh, yes, it is just a single sample. Now Logic has a couple of really neat things when dealing with audio and looping things up. If you'll notice here as I hover, as I hover near this kind of middle portion, I have this little icon with a repeating arrow on it. And if I click and drag, Yes, I can get a loop. However, because my sample is not exactly, uh, well, a nice even division of my song, the loop soon goes out of whack and uh, it doesn't work very well. Now, if I zoom in a little bit more, I can adjust that point a little bit. So I can start getting some crazy loops, but I can't ever go larger than my sample without stretching it, okay? So I can go smaller, which is fine. However, for this purpose, it doesn't work. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click and undo that. And now you can see as I go down here, I have another icon, of course, but it won't let me stretch it out. So how do you make a very small sample repeat nicely so it plays along? Well, you can do the old select and hold down the option button and drag it over and copy it and well, I mean, you could do that for the entire length of your track, but it becomes a bit painful. So what you can do is you can select all these. So I'm going to select, drag, and I'm going to right click. And I'm going to go down to folder. I'm going to go pack folder. Okay, so now what this has done is this has created a container. And this container contains my kick drums. Now, what's really neat is that each of these little containers, these folders that I've just packed, um, can be like their own little mini arrangements in there. So if I double click, you'll see that all the rest of my tracks disappeared because I am now in my kick folder. And I have this little arrow up here, which will bump me up. You can see here, it says leave folder. If I click it, now I'm at the main or the root view of my arrangement. And this is grayed out because I can't drill up anymore. So again, I can drill into my kick drum and there they are just as I laid them out, still on the same timeline. However, now they're in this nice folder and now I can take this folder and I can grab my little repeat icon here at the top and I can stretch it out and they'll always be in time. Okay, so now when I look at it, zoom in just a smidge more, you can see that no matter how much I stretch it or shrink it, it's always gonna be on the beat because I've created this one bar folder of kicks. Very, very handy. Now, if you want it to loop for the entire track, it's as simple as right clicking on it, going to playback and going loop on and off, also with the hotkey L, which is very easy to remember, okay? So now I've got my kick drum, which is playing exactly where I want it. Which means it should go with this, which I had previously flex timed in the previous video. And now I have a nice little kick drum in its own little folder. And the handiest thing is if I adjust anything in here, let's say, let's say I want to do some sort of weird breakbeat shuffly thing that's now reflected in every loop of my kick, right? So you can get the horribleness going throughout your entire track very easily. You don't have to cut and paste thousands of uh, kick drum samples. And I can just go here, undo it, and we're all back to normal. Folder tracks are extremely useful. You can use them for anything. So say you have 50 takes of your background vocals. You can arrange them all in a folder track. And then in your main arrangement view, you only have the one little region to play with. So you can put anything into folder tracks. They're not just limited to this, this very simple exercise that we've done here. Okay, so a very, very quick intro to folders. We're going to probably use them later on and I will see you in the next video.